All right, guys, I'm going to start reading here in about five minutes, but I just um, sent you a message on the side, and I wanted to um, remind you guys that there is a chat over on the side, but let's use that only for questions about the book and um, not talking to our classmates or anything, and then we will go from there. So I'm going to start here in just a couple of minutes, and... Um, I will save this video for whoever misses it. They can come back and listen to it later on in the day. So um, if you're on here, I just want you to um, say something in the chat. Say, hey, this is whoever. Just wrap me something and let me know that you're here. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and get started for those of you who are here. Um, so, as you know, in class before we left, we were reading the book Still Away Home. And we had finished it, and you guys were, were um, about to take the test, and then we left. Well, luckily, um, this book came in right as we were leaving. So this is the sequel to Still Away Home called Soon Be Free by Lewis Ruby. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to read one chapter a day to you guys and um, no tests, no quizzes, nothing. Just sit back and enjoy reading this and it's going to be a lot of fun. I have a message. Let's see what this is first. Okay. All right. So uh, I read the first chapter to you guys before we were out of school right after we finish Still Away Home, but I'm going to reread the first chapter because I'm sure many of you don't remember anything. So just stay with me and this, the chapters are short, so they won't take that long. All right. Soon Be Free by Lois Ruby. Chapter one, Firebird House. I ask you, why do weird things always happen to me? Mott says it's because blazing redheads are an anomaly of nature. So we're natural magnets for weirdness. He's got a point. Like, not long ago, when we were renovating Firebird House into a bed and breakfast, I found a skeleton hidden in a little room upstairs. I followed those bones back into the past and found out that this drafty, creaky old house was once a stop on the Underground Railroad. Not only that, but a runaway slave, Miss Elizabeth Charles, had died more than 140 years ago, right here, probably right where I'm sitting this minute. Mystery solved, right? Huh. Next thing I knew, on a night when there was barely a laser beam of moonlight, a man was snooping around with a flashlight and a shovel in my backyard. It had rained a lot. The yard was a swamp and the man's boots were ankle deep in loamy mud. Now, a normal person would have run for help, but not a blazing redhead. Besides, mud was squishing over my sneakers, so I couldn't have run very fast. I slogged up behind the man and yelled, My father's a police captain, you know. Actually, he's a history professor. But this fact wouldn't impress a serious intruder with a shovel and knee-high mud boots. The man tumbled forward at the sound of my bellow, and the flashlight flew out of his hand and sank into the bog. He scrambled to regain his balance. 
His shoulders were no broader than my friend Jeep's, and he had a sort of caved-in look to him, as if he'd had some terrible disease as a child. I, I lost my keys, he said, scraping mud off his shirt and pants. They were the high-waisted, plaid kind of pants my Uncle Tom used to wear, according to the faded Vietnam photos from the 70s. This man's clown pants were held up with suspenders as wide as chalkboard erasers. Tucked into them was a red flannel shirt buttoned to his chin. You'd think he was ambling in from hoeing the South 40. I'm supposed to believe you lost your keys in my yard? Dog ran off with them in his mouth. It's not your business, girl. Yes, it is. It's my house. Wasn't always, he muttered. Oh, this is about Miss Lisbeth, isn't it? There'd been lots of publicity since I'd found that skeleton upstairs. All of Lawrence, probably all of Kansas, knew how the famous architect James Baylor Weaver had lived in this house when he was a boy and how his family had harbored runaway slaves until Miss Lisbeth died here. You're looking for something that belonged to her? Like you're from a museum or something? He took off his glasses and blew on them, polishing them on his shirt. Now, why would I want some hairpin or a button from an old slave? Answer me that. Lots of people do. People who are interested in the Underground Railroad. I'm not interested. Well then, it's got to be about James Baylor Weaver. Never heard of him. Something in his tone made my blood pump faster. And without his grainy glasses... His eyes were hard as bullets. What are you looking for, mister? Instead of answering, he sloshed past me and started toward a black Ford parked in front of the house. At first, he just seemed comical sinking in mud in that weird getup. But then, he patted his pockets and a chill rippled over me when I heard the jingle that told me he hadn't been looking for his keys after all. What did he want in my yard? And had he found what he was looking for? The old Ford sputtered and cranked, giving me plenty of time to memorize the Kansas license plate before the man sped away. Spring rains in Kansas can be fierce. They send earthworms leaping to their death over the side of a culvert. So when I say puddles and mud, you get the picture. Diamonds of light filtered through a lattice wall around the back porch, showing me the man's flashlight beached in the mud with its nose sticking out as if it were gasping for a breath. I pulled at it against the resistance of the sludge and swiped the slimy flashlight down with my flank. This tells you what an elegant wench I am. Wench, Mike's word. Polished up, the flashlight revealed a plastic stick-on label hanging by a glob of glue. Ernie's Bait Shop. Beneath it was an address in Kansas City, Kansas, about 40 miles away. Looked like I'd have to figure out a way to drag Mike to Kansas City. Who's this Mike I'm always talking about? Well, he isn't exactly my boyfriend, since he's a full three months younger than I am. And besides, my parents would break out in festering, oozing hives if they thought I had a boyfriend at the tender age of 13. Mike's an experiment in progress, still rough like a lump of coal that might just polish up into the Hope Diamond. I'm checking him out carefully as a potential love object when I get to be a freshman. But at this point, I can tell you, he's no James Baylor Weaver. Sally and Ann and I, we're all sort of in love with James at 12, even though we know that he grew up and died 80 years before we were even born. Come to think of it, Mike does have one distinct advantage over James. Mike's still breathing. All right, so that's the end of chapter one. I'm going to give you a few minutes. If you have a question, you can type it into the um, chat over on the side, and then I'll answer it for you guys if you have a question. So far, so good. I told you guys that um, I've already read a couple of chapters, and it just keeps getting better. So. 
Um, if you don't have any questions, that's fine. I'm going to end this and then post it onto Google Classroom for those who were not able to attend at this time. But if you come up with a question or you have a thought, maybe you made a connection to the previous book, Still Away Home, whatever it is, if you have something that you want to talk to me about, you can shoot me a message over on Google Classroom or on our Go Guardians chat and we'll talk about it. Have a good day, guys.